Alright, All right, so what we're doing today is two things I wanna do today, right? I wanna do knowing which knowing which direction the trend is for um like using the different time frames to analyze the trend to basically know which direction you should be trading in. And then we will we are going to support and resistance, right? So yes. I shall know you can meet now. So first things first, right? When you're analyzing the market and take note of this, right? The higher time frame is always the stronger time frame, meaning the higher time frame has more influence in the direction of the market. What that means is certain patterns, right, that would make you place a trade, it has a higher probability of the trade actually succeeding if you find those patterns on a higher time frame, right? So, for example, if you find a trade on the daily time frame that says that tells you that you should go long, you should buy, right? And simultaneously, you also find a trade on the one hour time frame that tells you you should sell. And then the trade on the one hour time frame probably is not going to work because the one hour time frame is pinned against the daily time frame, right? Mm -hmm. And the higher time frame always well i wouldn't say always prevail but it has higher odds of working out right because the higher time frame is always stronger in a sense right so that's why when you're analyzing the market you want to know which direction which time frame in before you place a trade right because you don't want to place a trade to go short on the one hour time frame when you look on the daily time frame and then you look on the four hour time frame and both the daily and the four hour time frame is going up, is trending up. But you find a, a, a trade to, tra to, to enter short on the one hour time frame, then that, that would be like, that, that wouldn't, it, it, the chances of that working out is, is low, right? So, let me just drop some some let's see some, some text. All right, I'm gonna drop some text in the chat just so you know. Yeah, I could um have it visually, right? So we have the monthly time frame. Then we have the weekly. Then we have the daily. I'll just put daily. And then we have the full hour, we have the hour, and we have the 30 minute, and then we have the 15 minute, then we have the five minute, and we have the one minute, right? No. Maybe it's bigger. No. I'm going to lay down some laws for y'all right now, right? The one minute time frame, don't even think about it. But that time frame, it really doesn't matter, right? Because last week I see Sean placing trades on the one minute time frame and I wonder if Sean crazy. So the one minute time frame don't really matter because it's just, it's just what happened every it just hap it's just what happens every one minute and that's that's like a candlestick every one one minute. It doesn't this is a one minute chart, right? No, I can't even zoom out because the candles go get too small. But but the reason why the one minute don't matter is because we consider the one minute noise. Like it's just noise, it's just a bunch of candlesticks and it don't really move far, you know, like 
it might just move like a one or two pips down or one or three pips down. You're not looking for one pips, two pips. You're looking for 10, 20, 30, 100 pips, right? So unless you're willing to jump in a trade for three pips or five pips, then you could consider that one minute. But when you're actually trading, you don't you don't want to bother with the one minute, right? So let me hop on. Oh, I'm just the fifteen and five minutes. Sometimes I trade them, you know. It's just fast pace. You see candles moving quickly, but the only time you should bother look at those time frames is London and New York session, which is three o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock in the morning, because that's where people traders around the world actually putting their money in the market and trading trading these time frames. During the evening, nobody really bother into trade, so them candlesticks it don't they don't really like. They don't they, they just move how they want you know like you don't see the money flowing it might be consolidating a lot you know but yeah look we just had uh, two big candlesticks on one minute here all right um yeah i'll see you later just but yeah so When you trade in the forex market, right? You want to pick three time frames to look at, right? Three time frames. And it, it kind of depends on what trader you are, too. But generally, you only need three time frames, right? You can either look at the monthly, weekly, daily, right? You could look at the yeah. You could look at the monthly, weekly, daily. If you're um, a position type trader, you know you just want to enter a trade every few days and just leave it later on. Mm -hmm. Usually, these trades take longer to set up because you had to wait days for a trade to set up, right? You could look at the weekly, daily, four hour, right? Or uh, you can look at the you can look at the daily four hour one hour. That's the one I mostly look at. And you could look if you if you're a really short term trader and you just want to enter trades and be out by the end of the day, you could look at the um the four hour one hour thirty minutes, right? Usually these setups you find a trade on these these lower time frames. It's like you're in and out before the end of the week. Or you're in and out before the end of the day, right? You find a setup on the, 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 um, the daily four hour, one hour. It might take a few days. Or if you find a setup on a weekly and daily chart, then it will take like a few weeks, right? So, back on the monthly time frame, right? So, Remember last week I was teaching y'all um, trends and knowing what trend what, what, what um, trend the market in, right? So this lesson right here practices yeah. on your, your own um, time time into right. Last week the assignment was to be able to map out the um, the, 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 the the trend the market trend in, right. Like this, I guess in exactly less than half a year did that as predicted. I'm pretty sure, but eventually y'all gonna do it, right? So that little exercise will help you to know which direction, which time frame in, right? So when you when you're analyzing the market, like I said, you wanna know which what um which direction the higher time frame in. So you know which is, which is the better direction to trade, right? Because if the monthly and the weekly and the daily time frame is up, pointing up, then you know you should only look for trades that's going up, 
you know, because that's just that would increase your, your probability of being correct, right? So we could look on the on the um the monthly chart here and we could see okay, GBP AED is trending up clearly on the monthly chart, right? Each candle represents one or one total movement, right? So we could assume that this um that this was an impulse and then this was a pullback and then this was an impulse and now this is this currently a pullback, right? So now that we know that the monthly is up, we will put um we will put out the arrow, you know. Let's see if I put I don't know if I can label this. Can't label that. Ah, right, so we just make a little note. Just make a little note. Monthly. Oh, right. Now we hop on to the weekly, right? Now on the weekly time frame, we could see that the um the weekly time frame is down, right? Because we have one, two, three, and then this is another pullback, right? To go um to go lower here, right? Yes. Now, if you was a trader traded in the monthly, weekly, daily time frame, you know that this is the lowest point on the monthly chart, right? So longs, you can take longs as long as it doesn't pass this level. If you trade in a monthly chart, that is, mm -hmm. right? So if you trade in a monthly chart, then you're only looking for longs. If you trade in a weekly chart and the weekly trend is down, you know no, you could look for shots but you can only look for shots mm -hmm. down, to, down to this level, right? Down to this level, right? So the monthly is up. Um, the weekly is down, right? Now let's go down to the daily, right? No, Max, you have a question? No, right? In the um, in the chat box, is the daily up or is the daily down? Are you afraid of? Down. The daily down. Down, okay. Nobody else answering? Down. Okay. But I wouldn't enter it there though. Ah, uh, no. Remember what I taught y'all, right? What is yes. this? What is this? What is this? It's a dungeon. Is that don't train okay? And what is this? Oh, oh, oh. It's an uptrend, right? Uptrend, yes. So this is how mm -hmm. doing your homework would help, right? Because if you look here, it's a don't train, right? Yes. 
Oh yeah, the trend break there. Mm -hmm. If you look here, is a down trend, right? Yes. And then here, here the market change trends, right? Yes. So now here is an uptrend, right? There, there, there. All right, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're just going through um the trend directions on the, the different time frames, right? So um the thing I get dark. Yeah, so the daily trend would be up, right? So you just plug that in, right? Yeah. Because you want to look at the most recent trend for whatever time frame you're, um, you're analyzing, right? Right? So yeah. Yeah. Um, you will teach us more about the patterns soon. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I have everything. Everything. We yeah, just take it with time. I, I think someone tell me something like, if you see the market, form a W and a M, something like that. Yeah, man. I'll teach you exactly what I just use. Okay. No problem. So, don't do business now, right? This one might be like a tricky card. I'm going to ask you the real question. I want you to type it. Which direction of all our time frame trending? Hmm. Could you repeat that? Which direction of all our time frame trending? Down. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. In the group chat. What was the question again? Which direction for our time frame of trending? Yeah, let me zoom it up. I, we are looking the most recent or the overall that we have to right now. We can look at ports. Everything is seen on the chat right about now. So for me, the options too. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you can look at it this way, you know, like if you if you um if you draw in, if you draw out the overall move, it will, it will, it might look like this, right? But this is more of what it look like on the daily in our farm, right? But if you're just looking at the most recent price action, then it won't look like this, right? And then you might assume this move here could be the next move down because it, it would be accurate to say that it's a, um, a downtrend, but then it, it, it could also be accurate to say there's an uptrend depending on, um, depending on how much, if you, if you take, if you're observing the, the, the general movement of the market, or if you're, um, you're zooming in, right? So when it, when it kind of get complicated like this, you might just go with the higher time frame trend direction, right? Because if you look at it, you, you already had 
two time frames going up. Now you had a four hour going up too, but then you have a slight downtrend on the four hour, it could just be a pullback. But generally we could already observe that the market going up because several time frames pointing up, right? So we will just go it up and look for under four hour. All right, we go down to the one. Now the one hour time frame. The one hour time frame. Okay, I'll let to get this one. Which direction the one hour time frame going? It's consolidating. Sideways. All right, yeah, consolidating here. All right. This is consolidation, if I didn't know. Because you can clearly see the market not making higher highs or higher lows. It's going sideways, right? No, strongly. So I'll uh, buy more. And from observation, you can also see that the market was in a downtrend, right? It was in a downtrend here. It broke the market structure, right? It made a pullback, right? And before it can make another higher high, it start consolidating, right? Consolidation, if you if you read the um the, the thing I sent you, I read when I wrote it out, it's just where it have equal numbers of buyers and sellers at this price. So the same amount of people selling and the same amount of people buying. So the price is just um consolidating in the middle. For the price to drop, the sellers have to um, outweigh the buyers. Or for the price to, to go higher, the buyers have to outweigh the sellers, right? So after consolidating the market, normally make a big move either up or down? Yeah, you can have an explosive move after consolidation because that means one side just gave up, right? That okay. simply means... I understand. Like right here, right? You could say that the only time the price go drop is after the last buyer gives up. Meaning that, let's say it have 10 people buying here and 10 people selling here, right? Yes. The price will move. But when, as more um, sellers come into the market and the last buyer gives up, like the last buyer says, okay, that like the ninth buyer sale says, okay, I'm not gonna buy for eighty one for a dollar and eighty one cents anymore. Then the price could drop, right? Because the price is looking for somebody who's gonna buy. The price is gonna drop until if it has ten um buyers here, and it, I mean ten sellers here, and there are no buyers, the price is gonna drop until it finds ten buyers. So if everybody who have their money in the market sell in and it have a thousand dollars worth of sellers here, right? And nobody's willing to buy, the market is gonna drop until it finds a thousand dollars worth of buyers to consolidate, or if it finds a thousand and one dollar worth of buyers, then it go rise. Right? So yeah. So even though this is consolidation, we could consider this an um, uptrend. Well, we could consider it consolidation, sideways movement, right? But really and truly, it, is, it's, it might be an uptrend. You know, and I could say might, because not all the time, sometimes you have to make sure, you know? So even though this is in consolidation, we're going to wait until it makes this high to confirm, it goes higher than this level to confirm it's an uptrend, or it has to go lower than this level to, um, to say it's a downtrend because this is the high and 
that's the low. This could be the low because if the market drop from here and it come down here, then this could be a high, a low, a low, a high, and a low, right? So for now, we're just gonna say, we're just gonna say that the, um, the one hour time frame, one hour up, right? So really and truly when you're trading, when you're trading, it's not really this complicated. Like everything I just did here, you don't have to go through all of this. You don't have to write all of this down. You just need to, just swipe through all the time frames and then you can mentally make a mental note of which direction the overall trend is, right? So just from this top-down analysis of the different time frames, you could see that the overall direction of the market is up, right? The overall direction of the market is up. Because the monthly up, the weekly down, the daily up, the four hour up, and the one hour up, right? So this, now that you have this information, you have to tell yourself, okay, this pair or this market, longs would be in my favor, right? Yeah, you could go short, but you want to take high probability trades meaning you want the odds on your side. You want the odds to align with you. So would it make sense, and comment this in the chat box, to go short when most of the time frames is headed up? Would it make sense? Comment in the, in the group chat. I know that is something Rasha would do, but for the rest of you, would it make sense? Well, I guess it'll make sense for y'all because y'all ain't answering. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Lord, watch me. Don't say all you learn from me, eh? Don't say all you learn from me. Rashad, uh, Narun. <laughs> but yeah if yeah it depends on what type of trader you are right so let's go into that somebody said it depends on what type of trader what type of trader you are right so I'll just train the 30 minutes No, yes, you could go short. Yeah, you could go short. Maybe I would go short, but the odds are not in your favor, right? You could go short and you could win, but the odds are not in your favor, meaning there's a higher chance of you losing than you winning. You could, you could win and make money, but there's a higher chance of you losing because the direction of the market is up, right? Even if you're a position trader and you're only looking at the daily, the monthly, yeah. weekly, daily, mm -hmm. two time frames going up. So you would probably want to go with the majority, which is the time frames that are going up. If you're trading a weekly, daily, four hour, two time frames still going up. Yes. The higher time frame is going down, which is something you had to um, take into consideration. That means you would, ha you would have to um, do a little more digging, right? And then if you trade in the daily four hour, one hour, three times, three time frames going up, right? So that means you would be looking for longs, basically, right? Yeah. So, whenever you're analyzing a pair, right, you should start from the highest time frame, come down, right? And once you know 
what 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 phase all of these time frames in, then you could narrow down on your three time frames, right? So, I think everybody got this done. And from the lesson Friday, if you're good at telling the direction of the trend, like mapping it out, then this would help you to know which direction the um, which direction the your your time frame of choice is, right? So next lesson if we have any before we have any questions we have any questions we can move on to the next um lesson i guess i don't want to catch on okay so right now i know some of y'all probably um read about support and resistance and probably practice it but I have a certain way of how I use it, right? Now, I'd, I had, to be honest, I hardly use support and resistance. But I just have it with along, I have it with along one of my, um, it's just one of my confluences, right? I would never use support and resistance by itself. And if anybody don't know what support and resistance is, well, first of all, any, if you don't know what support and resistance is, drop it in the chat, let me see. Let me see who, 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 have, who hasn't been studying. I, I guess everybody knows. All right, well, let me skip that lesson then. I'm just joking. I don't know. What is it? All right. Who say that, Dave? Okay, so support and resistance, right? Basically, support and resistance are like the People use this analogy a lot. Uh, like the, the roof and the ceiling of the market, right? It's simply an area where people tend to place trades that would not allow the market to go beyond a certain point. So, for example, right? If you see the market do something like this and something like this, and it bunks off this level twice, you will tell yourself that this is a resistance level, right? Because every time the market gets to this level, it reverses, right? As for the bottom, it, it would be support. Whenever the market gets to, to the bottom, it reverses. So it's like the floor that you stand on, right? And it's like your roof. Because you know, like if you're standing on the floor, you, you can't go below the floor. And if you're trying to um, get get to the to the roof, you, you, and you jump like you had a trampoline in your house, and you jump, you probably won't go through the roof, right? Oh, for example, a ball. Oh, for example, a ball. Exactly. Right. But yeah. So support and resistance is just simply a price. It's a price. You could call it a price of interest right a level of interest it's just that people and banks are placing their trades at this level that um causing the market to not go beyond that level right so let me get an easy example if there was a bank here right and the bank placed um, a trade for a thousand a thousand dollars worth of sales right here, right? Let's say the market going up, and the bank placed a thousand dollars worth of sales sales right there, right? Now 
the market only had five hundred what dollars what are buyers buying right so the bank was only able to sell 500 worth of that currency right because the market ran out of buyers the market has to drop until it finds more buyers to go back up right now because the bank only got 500 dollars worth sold at that price the bank has to wait for the market to come back to that price for it to get its rest of orders filled right and it's not just because the bank is um trading the forex market it can also be that the bank has like let's say um amazon has workers in china and they have to get um you know, Amazon has workers in Japan and they have to pay their workers. They must pay their workers in Japanese yen. So they must exchange the dollar for yen. And let's say they want to exchange it at this specific price for this exact exchange rate. And they exchange a lot of money and the price drop. They had to wait for the price to come back up to get the rest of the money exchanged, right? So when people decide to buy, and push the price back up when it reaches back at the level that the bank sold then they could then the rest of the orders would trigger right the rest of the orders would be like sell limit orders so you have a thousand dollars worth of sell limits right there only 500 of them got filled so when the price comes back up the rest will get filled and it will drop right and same for this same for the bottom right so that's that's what you call um that's like a simple way of support and resistance right now the rules of support and resistance goes like this. Essentially, the market would bounce on support and reject off resistance, right? Once the market breaks through these levels, right? This this level now, this um resistance now becomes support. This this arm resistance now becomes support, right? And if the market breaks breaks um breaks under, then this will show support now becomes resistance and vice versa, right? Now when you're trading, you would learn how to anticipate when it's going to break or when it's going to hold, right? Essentially, if you're trading support and resistance, this is how the trade would go. Once you spot, once you spot the um, support or the resistance, you would enter the trade like this. You just enter at the support or resistance, you stop loss above the level, you take profit at the next support, right? If the market breaks the level, Usually, based on historical data, the market tends to always come back to retest the level. So then you wait for the market to come back and retest the level to enter a short trade, right? Because now this level would be um, resistance, just like how it was up here. This level is yeah. resistance, right? And you place your trade like this, right? So another thing right this is how you know if the level has been broken or not right depends on which time frame you're trading right if you're trading the daily four hour one hour time frame you have to wait for a candle to close um close above the level right now, a safe, a safe way to do it, you just wait for one of these candles to close. Like if the candle is still, if the candle hasn't closed yet, then it hasn't broken the level. Because a lot of the times the candles will push beyond the level, but then pull right back and close, right? Let me see if I can find an example for you. 
like this example right here, right? Like let's say this was a let's say let's say this was a level right here, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say this was a level right here. You see this whole this 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 candle pushed beyond the level, and a lot of the times people would say that the level is broken, but they didn't wait for the candle to close to make sure, and then the candle just pulls right back, right, and continues. So the stop loss would have would have got hit if you had go um shot here right so you always had to wait for a candle to close above or below the level right it would be safer if you could get a whole candle above the level instead of like half the candle close let's say um this is the level right right here instead of again like a candle to close on the other side and pull back yeah, that, that you could use that. That would be good. But it would be a higher probability if you could get an entire candle to close on the other side of the level. Meaning that if, if this was a level here, and you see how we have these doji candles here, how they, close, um, they closed entirely to open the high, the low, close on the other side of the level, then um, that would be a higher um a higher odds of saying that the level is broken right now, now essentially when I'm trading support and resistance i don't I don't wait for there to be um two rejections right. Like you just see how I showed you that analogy where it went like once and then you wait for the second one to make sure. I don't do that, right? One is enough for me, right? For me, seeing one sharp move and one sharp pullback is a support level for me, right? And and another thing, right? This let me let me show you what I want my support and resistance to look like because it's not always like how everybody else wants, right? When if the market trending up and it have a sharp pullback, sharp meaning like a peak, like something like this over here. The 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 peak of this would be a support and resistance level for me, right? Now when I see the market push through this, I want it to push through clean. Clean, clean like a whistle, right? I don't want it to drag through. I want it, if it, if it push, push through clean, then that's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. And then I'll wait for it to pull back, and then I could go long from here, right? I don't wait for two um, peaks. Or if it pull back and it goes straight down, when it come back here, when it pull back to, to retest this level again, then I would go short, right? So this could this would be like a um a good example right here, right? So see how the market pull push up here, right? Pull back, right? Now this is a level of interest for me, right? Let's if the market was to reverse. Because you don't want to just go short if it's an uptrend. If it's an uptrend, you know, you know in uptrends you don't go short. Simple, simple. In uptrends, you don't go short. Even if the level at resistance, you don't go short. So knowing that this is an uptrend and this is a resistance level, I know that this resistance level probably will be broken because the market isn't an uptrend, right? If the market is an uptrend, then you only pay attention to support levels, right? No, the level is not just one line. It could be a zone, you know, because the market is not always cute. It's messy. So this could be a zone. So this, like, this, you can, you can mark it off as in just some, 
some space above, some space above, and at the bottom, or you can mark it as the wick, right? The idea is just keep it like this, right? Now, like I said, when you see a sharp pull, a sharp value, a sharp peak is a support and resistance level for me. So just hold this pull back, this pull back here, and this peak is a level for me, right? The levels have to be pointy. It has to have a sharp move away. So you can just see this, this is sharp. I'm sure if I put my finger on this line, it gonna cut me. Look how pointy it is, right? So this would be a level for me, right? And knowing that um, is an uptrend, then I would look for longs at support. Right? So this is a simple way to, um, you would find a trade. One, you have a support level, right? Mm -hmm. Two, the market make a higher high. Three, the market coming down and it's in an uptrend. So you know, even though this is a support, this is also a lower high. So you know that the market cannot go beyond this point. So that's two reasons why you would enter long. It's an uptrend, so it can't go beyond this, this point, the, the lower high, and you have a support level, right? That's what I mean by aligning your confluences. This is two confluences why you could go long. Because even though the market is an uptrend, right? And the, let's say the market get up here and it pull them back. You don't just wanna, you don't just wanna enter any and any way on the pullback. You want to enter the best price and you want to enter where you think the market is going to turn around, right? And using the knowledge that you have, you, you map out where your support and resistance are. So you could, you could now tell yourself, okay, if the market gets down to support, I have a good um, chance to enter because mm -hmm. I, would, I would have little risk knowing, knowing that the market cannot go beyond this point and then I would have a greater reward, right? So another, another adding to how I draw my support and resistance a lot of the times, right? I would hop on the line chart, right? I would hop on the line chart. I want to on the line chart, right? And I find the sharp moves. You want moves that could cut you. Remember, pointy, like a, like a needle. So you see how this pointy? I would I would I would map this like this, right? Boom. Oh, you see how this level pointy? I would map this, and this coming all across here, right? So I know when this um break through, come back. Essentially, both these these highlighted areas are support levels, right? So let you have back on the candlestick chart. Now, if you if you was to take a trade on this first support level here, you could have, you could have gotten through, right? Or even on the second one, you could have gotten through. You just give it room. You just give your stop loss room to breathe, right? Usually, you give your stop loss. Well, text the textbook would tell you give your stop loss at least twenty to thirty pips space to move, right? So. Let me just go, 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 go over this, right? When you join your support and resistance, you look for sharp moves, sharp peaks, right? You can use the line chart because the line chart shows you the true movement of the market. Eh? The line chart shows you the market without any manipulation. Like these long candlesticks here could be manipulation. It could be the banks just want to hit people's stop loss or somebody just enter some, some large amount of money to move the market real quick to take out people. But the line chart is essentially the market without the, the wicks. If you get what I'm saying, right? So when you're trading, you want to know where 
your significant support and resistance level sad. So if you're trading on the the, the daily for hour, right? You would hop on the daily, right? And you just want to have, um, you know, not all the time you had to draw it on the chat, but you want to have mental notes of where the daily support and resistance level is at, right? So, you would come and you'll go on the daily line chat and then you can just, you can just map it out, right? You see this peak here? And you know, some a lot of the times you want to go for the most recent ones, right? So we had this move up, peak, pull back, sharp pull back up, right? So this would be a level right here, right? Now, if you're on the candlestick chart, you won't really see that. That's as a potent resistance level hidden in plain sight. If you're on the candlestick chart, you won't see that. If you go on the line chart and you see the true movement of the market, you would see it, right? So, let me just drop, drop in some levels, right? We have this level here, right? We have this over here, right? We have this over here. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want y'all to be dirty in your chat with support and resistance. Mm -hmm. Other people are dirty their chat with support and resistance, right? Mm -hmm. When you hop on the chats, I just want you to, to a lot of the times, you don't even have to draw it, you know. You just look at the chat and you know, okay, this is support, this is resistance. This is support, this is resistance. You can just look at it and see it. Not all the time you have to draw it out, right? But yeah, so when you have these levels on your chart, the higher time frame levels, you hop onto the four hour. You draw out your levels too. You know, just as, just as practice, you just draw it on, you know, like. You just make mental notes and draw it on, and then you remove it after because I don't want you to have to have these messy chats. People be happy. Now, this level right here, I wouldn't really consider this a level because it wasn't sharp enough for me. You know, I don't want no, I don't want, um, I don't want sloppy levels i want it sharp so this right here you see this one sharp this could have been a level for me right this could have been a level for me right and then this could have been a level for me right and then this was a kind of sharp movement right here that could have been a level for me right But support and resistance is not as important as people make it. You know, it's good to know and it's a good confluence. But it's not as important as people make it. Right? There's actually more important confluences that you would learn. This is like the base. At, at, right now I'm teaching you the basic stuff. As in the first, the first set of stuff you learn is not as important as what you're going to learn later. But it's important. It's not as, as, as a sh the, the confluence I'm teaching right now is not as powerful as the ones you're going to learn later, right? But um, any questions? I'll draw the support and resistance on the higher time frames too. And then it'll have another... Um, I'll just show you the next way people use support and resistance, and then we'll conclude, right? Any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Okay, since we have no questions, let me teach you all something right now. So, not 
all the time support and resistance mm -hmm. would be a candlestick pattern right support and resistance could also be um numbers meaning we have something called the quarters theory in the market right this means that people and banks tend to gravitate towards quarterly figures when they're placing their trades. Whenever the bank places a trade, the bank wants a wrong number. Whenever you place a trade, most of the time, you want a wrong number. Mm -hmm. When you're placing a trade, most of the time, you, put your, you take profit at a wrong number. Right? Because, I don't know, it'll probably look nice to you. And it, it saves the bank, it saves the bank um, time. As in, if you have a wrong number, it's easier to, to make your calculations and distribute your money in the bank, right? So what I mean by wrong numbers, when you're on the chart, you just map out the wrong, the wrong numbers would be a dollar, a half, a quarter and three quarters, right? So on, on this chart, a dollar would be, would be 1 800, right? So I'm gonna just straight, I'm gonna just straight on the chart so you could see how it look and you would tell me if the market reacting off these levels, right? And then a half would be 1 8 500. And another one would be one eight one hundred, right? Another one would be one um seven nine hundred. Levels, bro. Yes, sir. All right, and another one would be one eight one eight nine five right i only put the whole numbers and the half numbers in right institutional levels right what in institutional level i mean yeah you could call it institutional levels the reason why they call it uh later. the reason why they call it institutional levels is because the banks like to exchange their money at wrong numbers right like the bank don't want to exchange their money at one eight nine five three blah blah blah. They want to exchange it at a dollar, a quarter, three quarters, a dollar. You know, a whole, a quarter, a three quarters, or a half, right? Yeah. So just drawing out these levels, you can see how the market reacts, right? Mm -hmm. We remember, I didn't even look at this chart to see if the market reacting off these quarterly figures. I just put in the quarterly figures and you could see how it lines up with the market. Because look at how the market reacted off this, this quarterly figure, right? 1,800. The banks probably had some, some trades placed at this level, right? And you can see the how it drop. You can look and you see Look how the market reacting. Look how it reacting, right? You can see it's, it's reacting, right? Now, these are just the holes and the halves, right? You could go down to the quarters and the three, quarter, the three quarters, right? So, it's always good to make a mental note of these levels, meaning if you were to enter a trade, right, and you find your trade, but it's close to a quarterly level, then more than likely the market will go and touch that level before it moves in your direction, right? So if you find a trade near a quarterly level, and let's say I find a trade here, right, and you stop loss is on the quarterly level or near it then you better just tell yourself let me wait for it to get to that level or you put your stop loss beyond the level because more than likely the bank will push the market to that level so that it could um 
he could get his order his orders entered or most likely let's say um people entered long trades down here right more, more than likely their stop loss is exactly uh, i mean their take profit is, is exactly on um our, our wrong number which would be um 1.81 right and the market tends to gravitate towards that the market would tend to gravitate towards your stop loss or you take profit like a magnet because those are orders those are money in the market right so when you when you're drawing your support and resistance level let's say okay if i was drawing this level right and i saw this and i saw this and i didn't have my quarterly figure and i drawing this level right here right now because i know this the quarterly figure there right above I would just say, you know what? I'm not going to draw the support and resistance level. I'm just going to draw it on the quarterly figure level because the quarterly figure level is like instant support and resistance. And just look at how the market reacting to on these levels. Just look at it, right? Look at it. The spike. Look at the spike. You can't say I'm making this up because you can see it yourself, the market reacting from um, these levels. No. One, one thing we can say, I never learned this before. Yeah, I never learned some of that stuff that you never learned before. <laughs> so you could clearly yeah. see that the market reacting off these levels, right? Yeah. Now, this line chart right here, I know it shows that it didn't go down to this level, but if you go on the candlestick chart, you would see that it went, right? Even this, even these levels here. So, so so it's not just it's not and the quarters and the halves are good levels, but then you also have the um, I mean the halves and the holes are the good levels, but you also have the quarters that also work too, right? So the quarterly level could be like um, two fifty would be 250 and 75 right so i'll just punch in 250 let me see how it look if we have anything that line up and then we're gonna punch in 75 and see if we have anything that line up right no like i said before i'm not y'all not supposed to go and dirty out y'all could dirty out charts right while you're learning but when you're actually trading you don't want your charts to be dirty you want to have your charts clean and you want to be able to just look at the chart and see all of this without drawing anything on the chart right so i'll just change the, the um the color of the the quarterly numbers all right now, if you're a beginner and you're learning this, don't pressure yourself about it. You have time, you know? You don't have to bust your head on this quarterly figure. Just, just learn it, know what it is, and then we can move on. And when you're trading, just make mental notes and, you know, observe the price and how the price reacts to these levels, you know? And I'll, I'll, later down the line, I'll, when I'm actually analyzing the market, um let's say every week i would do like a breakdown of 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 me analyzing the market uh how i see the market so y'all could look at observe me doing that and then probably practice it on your own pairs you know and also trade alongside so we have these quarterly numbers here 75 18 75, 1, 8, 250, right? And we could see that we had reactions, right? No, again, I did not know that the market would react this way. And if you go on any currency pair, you would see the same thing. You know, you'd see that the market reacted off of these levels because people and banks have their money there. So that's what we mean. That's what we mean by support and resistance. We have orders at those levels that would cause a reaction, you know? 
It's a level of interest, a point of interest. If you just see the market in the middle of nowhere, then the market could go anywhere if it's out in the middle of nowhere. But if it's near a level of interest, which which a level of interest would be some a levels where your confluence is aligned, the, the stuff that you're learning aligned, then you know that you, you, you're going to have a move away from that level or towards that level. You know? You know that, okay, let me show you a simple way with a place a trade, right? You have your quarterly figure here, right? You just saw that the market is in a downtrend now, right? High, low, low, high, low, right? This was your support, no turn resistance, right? Support, support, the market breakthrough. So what tends to happen whenever the market breaks through support or resistance, it comes back and it retests the level. It touches the level, it gives the level a kiss goodbye before it takes off. And mm -hmm. you have your, um, your, your quarterly figure here. So first of all, once the market break down here, mm -hmm. you are already mm -hmm. telling yourself, okay, we're in a downtrend now. No, I look for shots. Where is the best level for me to go short, right? On this chart, the best level for you to go short would be one near the near um near the um lower high because you know once the market reach up here, it's not supposed to go beyond this point. So you would look for a short on the um on a support or resistance level here, or near uh or support or resistance here, but you know it's not supposed to go beyond the high, right? And then another area would, which would be a point of interest is the quarterly level here, right? The 1-800. Yeah. And if the market makes it up there, this is a resistance level. This is a quarterly figure. We're in a downtrend. So that's a level most likely people would be entering their shots at, right? Most likely, if the market is a downtrend in this area and the bank wants to enter a shot, the bank can go just enter the shot anywhere. The bank would enter the shot at the best price yeah. possible, and the best price for the bank would be the quarterly figures or or at a higher price. So if the if the market is not downtrend, the bank won't won't enter shot down here. The bank will wait for the pullback. Everybody waits for the pullback. Nobody chases the market, right? If the market already moved, think about it this way: you don't enter a shot on a bear candle. You don't enter a shot on a candle that's going down. You enter a shot on a candle that's going up because you want the best price and you want the market to turn around and drop, right? Because we don't chase the market. So just by observation, you the best places that would go short if you see this market is a downtrend would be at the quarterly numbers or uh, resistance near the um the lower high right so could have gone shot you would have gone shot you probably would have gone shot here to be honest and and oh shit i don't think that for us anyways and um yeah but yeah, you see how this chart kind of dirty here? We don't want we don't want that. But I guess when you're practicing, well, the others hardly practice. But I guess when you're practicing, you could um dirty a chart like this, right? Any questions? I'll hop on this group chat and see if I have a question. So I'm bright, boy. I'm real bright enough. And then there's an ask no question. Do we do we to jump on my um my, my DMs on Instagram to ask question you know, on my private message? <laughs> But yeah, so
this is an important conference and then we go learn this is um we have, we have about five or six to learn and this is the second one right so it's always good to know to know where higher time frames to put on resistance levels are because remember the rule i told you the higher time frame is always the strongest time frame so the higher time frame to put on resistance is the strongest support and resistance, right? So this level could be a support or resistance level on a monthly chart, right? You can see we had the move down, we had the spike up. This is a level, the market pulls back on a monthly chart that we know we could consider long, consider long on this level here, right? Should be a level. This, you see, you see what's going on here? Sometimes you just want to draw it so that it aligns with it more than once. So you see how this was a level, and then this was a level. Um, like just exactly like what I was saying, right? A lot of people, they wait for several bounces to, to consider this to be a level. They wait for several bounces. But what I'm saying is, you just, you, you only need one. Once you see a sharp move, then you know it has money there, right? If it's an uptrend, you expect it to be broken, right? If this is a short, you, the only time you, you don't go short, you don't go short on this. When you see this first sharp move down, right? You don't go short on it when it come back up in it. If it's an uptrend, yeah, yeah, you would expect it to be broken because it's an uptrend. But you know that when the market decides to come back down, then you could go short, right? Or if the market decide decide to um, or if the market decide to break down when it pull back up, then you go short, right? You just map it exactly like what happened here, right? When this level was made, we map it out, right? No, we expecting it to be broken. This level is just for later on. When it come back here, we, we take the long, right? Just like when it come back here, we take the shot, right? And this is a monthly chart. If you place a trade on this chart, you gain a lot of pips. So just from here to the bottom here, is a thousand pips. From here to the bottom here is a thousand pips, right? But but it, it just depends on what type of trader. Well, twelve hundred pips. It just depends on what type of trader you are. It took it took about four months for the market to move down. This twelve hundred pips. But if you are a real sniper, then you probably place a bunch of trades up here, and as the market going down, you just placing trades, placing trades. You know, writing it down. And that's another reason why you need to know which direction the higher time frame in. Because if you know that the higher time frame is up and you know that the market is moving up, then you could now be trying to enter trades. You know, enter trades as it's going up, just keep entering trades, right? So that eventually, sometimes you end up with all 10 lots. 10 lots going up the road, 20 lots going up the road, you know, $200 a pip, 100 pips, 20,000, you know. But yeah, any questions? No questions? All right. Well, if you enjoy this class, drop something in the group chat. Participate. Remember the competition. All right. And then we can lock it off. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.
Yeah, yeah, no, no. 